Guys, Dobby here, and this will be my first YouTube video. Yay! I'm a YouTube virgin. Yay! All that crap. Who can't fucking flip a PPT? This thing needs a little bit of oil. Just anyway. Um, this is my this is my first video, so I think I'm gonna make a shop tour video, which just to show the materials I'm working with and what I'm making with the equipment I have. So, yeah. I mean, I think that's the first. I've been doing this for about one and a half years and you know without further ado I'll s probably I'll start off showing what some of the work I've actually done now this is one of my most recent ones I don't really know what to call this if anyone's got any I think yeah, well, I've thought of maybe skirmish or something and this is come on focus focus fuck okay It'll focus here. This is um, 1095 high carbon, and the handle is sculpted G10 with a kind of mm, a mimicry with the tough knives, tough knives reptilian pattern. I really want to come up with my own pattern, so I don't have to use Jeff's. But it's it's pretty good. I like, I, I think it's gotten it's better than the very first time I tried it anyway. So I uh, well, won't. Try putting this back with one hand because I'll end up stabbing myself in the hand. Anyway, let's start here. Here is my little. Oh, before I go there, um, this is the the room I'm in is actually an old garage where they kept cars. Obviously, best thing about this is that it's actually an extension of the house. So I've got heating, and I've got cooling, which is amazing. You get you see some of these knife makers in a little shed <laughs> in summer and winter, and they're freezing their nuts off. No problem here. So this is just, this is a really old blade. Don't take that as an actual representation of my work. <laughs> Screws. I mean, here I've got chain ring bolts, eyelets, those sort of things. Do like chain ring bolts. Really, really nice screws. I love them because you can actually, they double as a lanyard hole. So that's something that's really great about them. Vice, safety equipment. I've got my earmuffs, respirator, actually really important. <laughs> Don't, I don't really fancy dying of some horrible lung disease, so that's, that's why I have that. And this pair of safety glasses. Now, if you're buying safety glasses, make sure there's a crack in the middle of them. I mean, that's that's the most quality safety glasses if there's a big ass crack in the middle. If you don't have a crack in the middle of them, just stamp on them a little bit. You know, it obstructs your view. It's great. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding around. Anyway, Dremel. I like Dremels. Dremels are good. This is not plugged in, so it does not make, make scary loud noises like a dentist troll. Anyway, some we have normal gloves. I use these for mainly heat treating and sanding. I don't know if anyone else has the problem, but whenever I seem to cut myself, it's because I'm sanding a fucking blade and just rips the shit out. You know, the blade isn't sharp per se, but it has an edge. So if you're, you're sanding and then suddenly you slip, you just slice your thumb open and it really hurts, especially since it's a, it's well, too, kind of a toothy edge. Anyway, gloves, these are my Kydex gloves. I've been told to keep them separate, which is what I'm doing. You know, prevent scratches. I gotta work on Kydex. <laughs> uh, some knives, most of these I'm, I'm not happy with, which is why they're up here. I mean, I've got a strop. This is just sort of like a little beater that I use around the shop. And that's just a little sandpaper knife. I don't know. I mean, this one, this one here, I was excited about, but then I realized how much it looked like a Medford Praetorian, and I kind of lost interest. If I ever was to finish this off, I don't think I'd be selling it. That's just the way it is. Anyway, uh, drill press. Haha. <laughs> Probably the most dangerous piece of equipment in the shop. They, it's just, it looks so innocent, a little innocent machine, but this thing will really, really hurt you. I got this, if I can find a clamp. Usually I have a clamp here. And what that does is, well, why the drill, why, if I back up a bit, why the drill press is so dangerous is because when you're drilling into steel, it can actually bite and in, grab into the steel and just helicopter it. And if, you ha if you're drilling with a sharp edge, that's going to take your finger off. If it does, especially if it does a 360, you, you're not going to have fingers anymore. Or it hits you in an artery or something, you're, you're going to die. But even in a blunt edge, like if you're just drilling it before you've even beveled it like I do, that thing does a 360, it's going to break your fucking fingers. 
And I like fingers. Fingers are good. Fingers let me make knives. So what an idea I got off one of Mr. Snowdy's videos is put a clamp here. And what happens is if it grabs, it goes smack and hits the clamp. And your fingers are alright. So we've got a pile. And yeah. And that's the idea behind that. A pile of drill shavings, I guess. I don't know what to call them. Don't know what the real name for them is. But I don't know. Maybe one day when I have enough of them, I'll probably just give them to a scrap metal dealer. But I don't really want to. I don't know, just don't want to throw them away. <laughs> they might be worth something if they gather up in like 20 years. God damn it. So, drill bits, and what I actually use for counterboring is these point drill bits. So, what I'm doing is I, you know, I, I mark out where I want them, then I counterbore, and then I, I counterbore with a bit, and then I drill the hole through. And I seem to get, it seems to work pretty great. Probably better than just using a normal bit. <laughs> Anyway, I also use those for Kydex because they're easy to they're easy to aim because they just go a single point that grabs. Anyway, coming up around here, here we have my little area of goodies: more screws, Torx drivers. This is my um. This is how I test for sharpness. I'm not very good at sharpening at this point, but my edges can cut this. This is just um, friendable paper. They can cut this pretty easily. I need to practice sharpening, and yeah, that's, that's probably going to be fun. Anyway, coming up here, we have a big box of goodies. Canvas micarta, big sheet of that stuff. And um, G10, those sort of things. Vulcanized paper. I actually bought quite a bit of this off USA Knife Maker. You know, they were off cuts, and they were like seven bucks or something like that. Anyway, so I've, I don't know. I thought maybe it's probably better to have them and not use them than use them and not have them. Just, you know... Because, you know, liners, but I was actually going to use these the other day, and then I realized, um, I read somewhere that they actually absorb a lot of water, and then they'll swell, and, you know, fuck up your handles. I mean, if anyone has a problem with that, or if they do, they have a solution, I'd be great. I'd like to hear it. Hmm. Much appreciated. Kydex is also down there. And then we have a little Kydex press and sharpening stone there. Coming up around here. There's usually a crap ton of timber here, which I just put in the vise and use as a sanding block and those sort of things. But the great thing about having timber here is that it's, it's like an early morning coffee. You get up, oh, I'm going to go work in the garage. It's going to be great. Coming into the knife den. Fuck, you smash your toe in there. You stub your toe. You stub your toe. You're bleeding, but you're awake. Uh, uh. Yeah, I, <laughs> I make quite a habit of smashing my foot into that. It's, it's quite interesting. Lovely experience, especially in the morning. Anyway, here we have drill bits. And yes, drill bits up here. We have um, a big glass shelf. I actually use this because it's really, really flat. And the advantage of having such a flat piece of glass is that you can test for warpage, which is the main reason for it, which these blades are warped. So I've got to fix that somehow. But it's also great for scribing. I don't actually scribe with this, I use a pair of calipers and also for flattening out sharpening stones. It's just nice to have a nice even surface to work on. And here is another even surface. I don't know what this is called, it's certainly not a hardwood, but it's, it's pretty flat, not as flat as this, but it's flat enough and it's a lot more portable because it's not a big ass glass sheet. So I can take this if I want to be doing something in the living room that isn't really that dirty, like friction folder assembly or something like that, I can take that and do that in the living room. Here we have just have some weights, talk about that later. Um, screws. I have, I, a couple of years ago, when I was about 13, I actually um, got a hands on crap ton of computers. And if I could open this with one hand. So in here, there's a lot of stuff like hard drive, hard drive bearings. These things, these are bearings out of a hard drive. Probably, <laughs> probably too big for, frick, for folders, but pretty cool. But I love depth perception through a camera. Wow, that went well. <laughs> That's a bit of a fail. Anyway, but there's also, it's also full of little um, computer screws which I stripped out, which are actually quite useful. Coming up around here, we have a piece of baking paper on the floor. We have, um, this is my little gluing and laminating station. Here is just a block where I mix up my glues. To mix the glues, I actually use these cut, cut off zip ties most of the time. But I also got uh, this idea of dirty rooms, little off cuts of Kydex. And if any of you guys have worked with Kydex, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You get all these little shitty offcuts, you don't know what to do with them. Well, you can actually cut them up and use them as little um, glue applicators or glue mixers. 
anyway, so I've got, this is how I laminate. I've got two sheets of melamite. I think that's what it's called. Um, and then I just, I make like a G10 sandwich. Um, the G, the epoxy doesn't stick to this baking paper. So I use this to keep it all a bit, a bit more clean, you know, laminate it up like a big old G10 sandwich. And then I stick the one, the five kilograms and the two one kilograms on top and just let it sit for a while. Um, here we have angle grinder. I don't always have this here, but when I do, I make full use of it. It speeds stuff up so much. Oh, it's, it's nice. You know, just cutting out stuff and grinding it to shape. It's all good. Here we have another. These are hard drive magnets that I've just nailed to a bit of wood. It's, um, I use this mainly for surface grinding or pretend surface grinding because it's not that crazy flat. You know, just cleaning up an edge, cleaning up the flats. And here, just a block of timber. Sometimes use it for sculpting G10, WD-40, torch for anodizing, belts. I need a few more belts. This and a bit more organizational system. Now this is a pretty worn 24 grit belts. My main belts are 24 grit and 80 grit. Um, 24 grit I mainly use for just basic shaping, you know, cutting the shape out of the steel. But sometimes I use a worn 24 grit for very thick bevels. You know, the, the blade steel is really thick. I just sometimes use a 24 grit, you know, clean it all up, well, not clean it up, grind it out, save some time. But the thing about these 24 grits is I think they're oversized. I mean, I paid money for good belts and the, I just smacked the camera with this. That's not a good idea. I paid money for good belts and these are actually, I'm pretty sure these 24 grits are a bit oversized. It actually pisses me off a little bit because I can't center them. And I'm pretty sure these things are going to cut me one day. I don't know. Shop vac. That's something that doesn't like to work, but that's just the nature of the beast because it's a piece of shit. Anyway, coming up around here, spark bucket. I actually really like the spark bucket as a source of refreshment. I make my early morning coffee out of here and this sparky water with steel and G10 and Kydex is actually really good for the skin. Just, you know, rub it into your skin, opens up all the pores. Lovely, lovely stuff. <laughs> here, uh, grinder. It's, it's getting old. I mean, I've ripped the shit out of this track here. The little track in here. See this? That little track has been just worn to hell. This is not really supposed to be running all the time like I'm making it run. I need to buy a new grinder, but I can't really justify forking out the money for a good old, for a really good grinder if I'm not making money out of these knives. And yeah, so that's, that's where I do the grinding. Coming up back around here, I'm running out of time. I don't really want to go over 15 minutes. Anyway, coming up back around here, we have this fan. Um, I find that if you actually take this fan, and you put it here in front of the door. What I do is I open up this door here and I open up that door back there. And what happens is it, it just, this, it sucks. And really this only works for the light stuff like G10 and Kydex. Uh, it doesn't work for steel cause it's just too heavy. Um, it actually sucks all this stuff out of the air and throws it outside. So it just, it makes things a bit more less hazardous, cleans, keeps your shop a little bit cleaner and you know, stops you dying a very horrible death. Probably, I don't know. <laughs> not a doctor. Anyway, so that would be my shop or workshop garage. I don't know. There's not much else to show you besides a little bit of fine grit. Sorry. Anyway, so I'd really like to keep going with this YouTube stuff. I mean, I'm probably going to go into more depth. My next video might be into showing off my skirmish or skirmish thing. I don't know what else to call it. So it's skirmish for now. Anyway, it's showing off this. But I might also show off my war machine, which is a, a blade I would like to mass produce. I think I'm making, I made the prototype the other day and I'm making the very first one off that prototype today. No, finishing, how are you treating that today? Blah, words. Anyway, um, I think I've made somebody sick with all the camera shake in this video. If so, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, if you have been sick, drink plenty of fluids. I'm rambling now. And I'm just gonna say Dobby, uh,